nowhere, no matter how you read the Bible, sideways, upside down, doesn't matter. You're never going to find any delegation of authority to Caesar, to civil government over the education, the minds of young people or anybody else. It's just way outside the bounds of what government should be doing. Hey, everyone. This is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We have such a great episode. This one's going to be a little bit different than what we've talked about, what we normally talk about, uh, but you are going to be so very encouraged. I've got Alex Newman, who you are very familiar with. He's been on the podcast several times, and I know most of you are familiar with Lee Bortons as well. She's the founder of Classical Conversations. Um, just both of them have had a huge hand in the success of homeschooling in our world today, and I'm so grateful for both of them and their ministries and all that they do to serve and support the homeschool community, not just in America, but worldwide. And so um, this week, we are going to talk about something big that's going on in the homeschooling community. Uh, but before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. Try them out for free, ctcmath.com. Well, Alex and Lee, welcome to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so delighted and honored to have both of you with me today. Um, several months ago, we got an email from Alex, actually, and he said, we've, we've got this um, document. It's called the Declaration of Educational Independence. And we'd like to know if you'd be willing to sign this. So we looked it over and we we're like, wow, this is amazing. And we felt so honored to be part of that first group of people to have access to this and to be invited to be one of the signers of this declaration. And so as, as we've read through it and looked through it and, and prayed through this, along with so many other people, we have just been so blown away by uh, the wisdom and the thoughtfulness that has gone into this Declaration of Edu Educational Independence. And before we get into it, I'm going to have Alex actually read it. It's not super long, but I'm going to have him read through it. But before we get into that, I, I want to just get a picture of what the multiple spheres of government are, uh, because, you know, it's not just federal, it's not just state, it's not local but it also includes family and church and God. And over all of that is God, God, the creator, right? He is the one who controls all government. He made all government. He's the primary government over everyone and everything. And I think sometimes we tend to forget that, right? But first it's God. He's our primary government. And then it's family because the family comes under God. And, and even the family is governed a certain way, right? You've got God, then you've got dad, then you've got mom, then you've got kids. And then the church government comes after that. And then we're looking at state government. We're looking at federal government. We're looking at our local government, but they all have their proper jurisdiction in our lives. I mean, and in the world. And so I want to talk about God's authority and, and he is the one who established government, right? And so as we look at this document um, this week, I, I want you guys to really, I mean, <laughs> this is going to be a thinky week. We're going to have to think through some of this stuff. Um, but like I said, so much has gone into this declaration. And so we're going to talk through it. But first, Alex, would you mind just starting at the beginning and reading the Declaration of Educational Independence to us? Uh, thank you, Ved. Honored to be here and uh, honored to be able to read this. So uh, we start off with a little uh, introduction, which we will skip now, but the declaration itself begins with, uh, we the undersigned endowed by nature and nature is God with certain inalienable rights to declare that the authority to direct the education of citizens rests with family government and not with civil government. We affirm and declare that a flourishing society is built upon families that are free to exercise those rights in order to fulfill their obligations and responsibilities to future generations and further declare that education, which is simply the soul of a society as it passes from one generation to the other, is the natural and proper jurisdiction of family government and not of civil government. That the bond between man and woman is so sacred and its effects on their sons and daughters so incalculable that all institutions are obliged to respect, defend, and maintain that bond. That all forms of government, self, family, church, and civil are ordained by God to preserve the life, liberty, and property of its members in accordance with the laws of nature. Further, to reverse the civil government's usurpation of the proper functions of family government, we declare that both elected officials and unelected bureaucracies must act in accordance with the natural and constitutional limitations that circumscribe the powers of civil government. 
Civil governments must make no laws restricting the free exercise of each family to associate for educational purposes through policy, enforcement, or funding, and any such laws or regulations must be removed. Therefore, to restore education to the proper jurisdiction of family government, we propose that citizens recognize their role as members of families and secure and maintain the natural obligations of such, including all of the costs and consequences of educational choices. That family members, with the assistance of voluntary mutual aid societies, support private entities that offer the public a variety of educational resources, services, and scholarships. We, the undersigned, in the name of life, liberty, and the responsibilities inherent to the pursuit of happiness, solemnly publish and declare that the establishment of education is reserved for family government, its members, and voluntary associations. For this declaration, we pledge our support with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. And that's it. Short and sweet. I love it. I love that last line. For this declaration, we pledge our support with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. And that's really what it's all about, right? I mean, God has given us a great responsibility um, and jurisdiction as a family. Um, Lee, I want to ask you, and welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad that you're with me as well. Um, where did this come from? I mean, how how in the world did this even come about? Whose idea was it? Kind of walk us through the process that's gone into this. How long has it taken to get to this point? Yeah. So basically, what happened is over the last two dozen years, um, I've well, I've been a freedom maximalist since I was twelve. But over the last two dozen years, I started to realize that most people weren't. And as I saw more and more government encroachment occurring on my family and our businesses. And, you know, I, I, I bit my tongue for quite a while because even though I was always personally against public education, I knew the majority of people I loved and worked with all, you know, embraced public education. But during COVID, with the mess that occurred first before with the Me Too movement, then afterwards with all the shutdowns and the very stuff, just, just the silliness that went with it, I felt repentant. Like I should have said something a lot sooner than I did. And so I began talking to folks like Alex and uh, people that I knew were like-minded and um, trying to figure out what we could do to work together. And we belonged to a group called the Christian Education Initiative, which was already working on trying to get organizations to promote Christian education. But something funny happened. Before COVID, uh, you know, the three of us were considered odd. Then all of a sudden we were superstars. And then everybody wanted to bring classical education, not Christian education, but classical mm -hmm. education to all the school systems. And people who were not like-minded with us were coming to me. They used to be, you know, I wouldn't say opponents, but they definitely weren't in agreement with us and saying, all right, what in the world is it you've been doing? Please explain it to us. And I had a number of people in high political office come to me and discuss this. And when I would explain what we were doing, you know, and I would say, why are you supporting all this new socialism through vouchers and ESAs and all the funding and, and these private public partnerships? I don't understand how you say you're a free marketer and you're against universal basic income, but you're for universal public education. That didn't make any sense to me. And I, and I want to clarify that I actually am for a universal public education. I'm not in favor of universal public schools. I think that's a horrible way of going about educating people. But meanwhile, so what was happening is these legislators and people I was talking to were saying to me, I have never heard any of this before. I thought either you paid a lot of money to go to private school, you were in public school, or you had to do everything by yourself as a homeschooler. And I was like, no, there's thousands of options. And they began to want to know more. So I called Alec and a few other friends and said, could we get together and kind of write a statement and a few people wanted us to write public policy statements. A few of us wanted to do, to write um, kind of po you know bullet points, but I wanted first as a classicalist to write a declaration to first say where the presuppositions all come from and why we believe what we believe. And so that's where the declaration came from. And so it's been really well received and I hope that more people will sign it. Love it. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Alex and Lee. Um, Lee, tell us, um, as you were writing this, what was the goal? What, what are you hoping to accomplish through this? 
you know, I'm not trying to convince everybody in the United States or worldwide, you know, CC's global, homeschooling's global to agree with me. What I was trying to do was give words to the people who do agree with us, but don't have the words to explain it and to mm. let them know there was a place and a group of people working really hard to educate folks on free freedom education. Because like I said before, legislators and leaders were coming to me saying, I don't know how to explain this. My gut tells me not to expand socialism, but everybody thinks public education is an inherent right, and I don't have the words to explain things. So it would be wonderful if next week something happens and all the public schools close down overnight, because that can happen. <laughs> we saw it with COVID. People keep yep. telling me, you know, this is a long-term thing. And I'm like, no, I'm a believer in miracles, but I'll accept long-term too. So the goal is to really use the declaration, whether you agree with all of it or some of it, to begin conversations and have a place where our terms are defined and our little bit of history is referred to and some classical language is involved. So the leaders of leaders have a place to say, hmm, what do I think about this? And not just accept the status quo. Yeah, Alex, um, I wanna hear from you. So as Lee came to you and you started hearing about this and just starting to write down some of what, what the thoughts were, and like Lee said, putting into words for other people what they know, but didn't necessarily know how to express. What were your thoughts on this? Why did you jump on board and decide to be part of this? It's a really cool story. Actually, we end it with a firm reliance on divine providence. When Lee called me and said, hey, we're having this meeting. Can you come? Wow, divine providence. I just so happens that I'm going to be driving through North Carolina that very day on my way to wow. New Hampshire. Imagine <laughs> that. So, uh, so I stopped in and uh, Lee and I had had a lot of conversations about this um, and, and a lot of the others involved in our movement. Like, you know, we need an end goal because th there's a growing pragmatic understanding that the public schools, the government schools are not working. Right. On, on the at least on the conservative side of the spectrum, there, there's now an almost universal recognition that we've got to get the children out. But then we have this movement. Well, the government should just give people money. And and my thought is, and, and I've had this on my mind for years and years, and we need to define the ultimate objective and we need to define the principles that underpin this. It's not just a pragmatic argument. It's not just, well, the government schools aren't doing a good job, so let's find another way to do it. It's why is the government involved in education in the first place? Where do you find that in the Bible? Yeah. Um, you know, So forget the pragmatism for one second. And the pragmatic argument is fine. It's obvious the government schools are a total failure. But even if they weren't, the principle at stake here is, do we want a the coercive machinery of government to be operating the educational institutions? There are many principled reasons why we shouldn't want this, starting with the biblical one. The government has, the civil government has a job description. That job description is to punish evil, to protect the good, to deploy the sword for the stopping of evil. Nowhere, no matter how you read the Bible, sideways, upside down, doesn't matter, you're never gonna find any delegation of authority to Caesar, to civil government, over the education, the minds of young people or anybody else. It's just way outside the bounds of what government should be doing. And so my thought was, you know, let's put this document together where we define our principles, where we state our ultimate objective. I mean, we all know, right? Everybody uh, on our side of the spectrum here knows that we're not going to shut down the government's indoctrination centers tomorrow. Uh, it's a trillion dollar a year Goliath. It's a monstrous beast with more money than any of us could ever even imagine. We're not going to shut it down tomorrow. But by defining the principles and defining an end goal, a total separation of civil government from education, we're moving the ball in the right direction. We're moving the Overton window over to where it needs to be. And we're also helping to articulate for people who are on our side but don't quite understand the principles beyond the pragmatic argument that, look, there is a goal. There is a principle at stake here. This is what we should be pursuing. And it's only been out uh, for a little while. And already, I think it's accomplishing that purpose. I'm thrilled to see the, the response so far. Yeah, it has been amazing. Um, who are the, and, and we're going to get to the document for our listeners. I actually want to walk through piece by piece the document itself. Um, I know Alex has already read it, but then I want to kind of pick it apart. Um, who were the original signers of this document? Well, so it depends what you mean by original signer. So there was 12 of us that met to originally get together. Um, myself and somebody I hired who wasn't even at that meeting did the research on the biblical and patriotic history of education and pulled together things from Locke and Chesterton and the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and kind of gave us a very flowery um, a uh, set of ideals that we could pick from. And then there was myself and Alex and a few folks from Classical Conversations, my son Robert included. And then we had some, an elite, we had two leaders from the Freedomship Institute, which is a um, 
lobby organization that promotes homeschooling, as well as some retirees from um, the Republican leadership movement. And um, we had, you know, like none of these people were really big, big names, but yeah. they were people that I know knew than big names. And so, um, so I'm trying to think if there, you know, who else was there? Alec, help me remember. Oh, I know some leaders of universities. Uh, so there was educators as well as politicians and a few um, parents. So we just wanted feedback from, and some of them weren't from homeschooling. They were from private education trying to support mm. us. So we worked on it for a day. And then afterwards that gave them about two weeks and they went and got feedback and chewed it up. We had pastors, I forgot they were there also. Mm. Um, and over the next two weeks, I met with my writing team again and we took all their ideas. And uh, this is the declaration you see now is what we came up with. And then over the last month, while well, each of us that were the original writers were finding a handful of leaders of leaders to be co-signers along with us, they gave us corrections and some feedback and we tweaked it a little bit more. And so what you see published was really six weeks of type A personalities. I'm telling you, it was herding cats. <laughs> I'm but sure. I was persevered <laughs> and it happened. And what's interesting to me, Yvette, is a yeah, handful of people said, no, it's not strong enough, I won't sign it. And a handful of them said, oh, you're too mean, I'm not going to sign it. <laughs> so of the dozen original folks, um, I think two did not sign it and all the rest did. And so we've been spending just this last week, it's been released September 5th, and today's just September 10th or 11th, uh, getting the word out. And we have a couple hundred signatures now, but we've emailed probably a thousand friends and leaders of leaders by this point, waiting to see their response. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I want to walk through this piece by piece and kind of exposit this document because I know that it's available for anybody to sign. Um, there, there are the original signers of it, but this is a document that we want everybody to read, everybody to consider. And if it's something that you agree with, you have the opportunity to be part of this. And this is part of history. I mean, I think it's so cool. It really is part of the educational history of our country. And so we get to be uh, just a little part of it. And we're so honored to do that. And so you are listeners, you have an opportunity to be part of this as well. So we will put links, of course, to everything um, having to do with this document on uh, in our show notes uh, so that you can participate in that. Really quickly, um, Lee, tell us where we can find it, even though we'll have the, the show note links. Um, but for those who might not want to look at the show notes, uh, where can people find the declaration? At educationalindependence.net. And it's .net on purpose. It's not commercial. It's not a nonprofit. It's just private citizens in a network. Nice. And it's not .gov. That's so odd. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. All right. Well, we love you guys. Thank you for being with us today. We're going to come back on Wednesday, talk more about this document. It is called the Declaration of Educational Independence. Um, if you guys have not yet, not yet watched the movie Schoolhouse Rock, that is a movie that really goes well along with this document because it really talks about the freedom that we have with home education to disciple our kids and that we are the ones who God has given rule over our homes and over our children. So if you've not seen the movie yet, go to schoolhouserockedmovie.com. You can watch it for free. Free, you guys, free. It doesn't get freer than that. Schoolhouserockedmovie.com. Share it with your friends. We love you guys, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Have a great day. Stay tuned to the very end to see what's coming up next. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. The idea that this function would be removed from the family and put in the sphere of civil government is a very, very new innovation. I mean, you know, the ancient Greeks flirted with it a little bit. It was a total disaster. I mean, think of Sparta. Um, and, and then it was resurrected in the early 1800s by a man who rejected the Bible, who rejected private property, who rejected the family as an institution. His name was Robert Owen, set up this ridiculous communist compound in Indiana called New Harmony, total failure. And uh, he came to the conclusion that it failed because children had been educated by families in a Christian society. And so the solution to that, in his view, was having the government take over. 
uh, that idea snowballed and culminated in this atrocity we have today called the public school system. 